is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel and welcome to uh, the Here Comes the Sun Swim and Beachwear Roundup. This is the first video that we will actually be doing a suit. Um, I am making the Cottle Sew Suit by Megan Nielsen. And in a few moments, I'm going to cut to a camera where I show you how I figured out what size to cut, how I altered the pattern, and how I measured uh, myself for the pattern. And um, these will be all good techniques that we can use forward in other suits that I'm going to make. We are um, going to be making probably five or six more suits after this. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell and you'll be notified when those um, videos go online. Normally they will be on Fridays, occasionally maybe late Friday night, so you might not see it till Saturday. But this is Friday Sewing School. I haven't forgotten about um, the other things we were doing for Friday Sewing School. Um, I preempted this because I am actually sewing for my Mexico vacation. You can tell I'm a little excited about that. <laughs> and um, I am extremely um, excited and I need some new suits. So I thought I would just take you guys on that journey because it's something that other people have told me that they would like to see. So the cottle sew is a basic one piece suit and you can actually use this suit um, as a block to make many other suits. Um, it has a tie feature in the back which kind of acts almost as a bra band um, which kind of brings everything together really nicely. So I'm very excited to um, be making this suit and um, I will take you along on the journey. So I'm gonna cut to the camera, show you how I measured myself and from there, I'll show you how I uh, determined what size to cut and um, how I altered the pattern. Here are the measurements that you need for a one-piece bathing suit. Um, go shoulder to shoulder, just the uh, point where the bone sticks up right there, okay? You're going to need that just to make sure that you don't need to adjust the shoulders in so the straps will stay up. And I have a 14 and 3 quarters for me. Then you want to do your high bust. Some patterns will have um, this on them and some won't, but some do and it's a very helpful thing. If it does, this is what you should choose your pattern by. And for me, I have a 39 and then your full bust I have 40 whoop. I have 43 and a half and then your natural waist which is right where your hands sit if you like put your hand on your hip where your hands where you like your waistlines to be I have an even 40 and then your full hip. Um, you want to do right where you bend. Don't go to where your thighs are the fullest because the one piece bathing suit doesn't go down that low. So you want to go right at your full hip, which is usually uh, seven to nine inches down from your waist. Um, but the best way to tell is to just bend over and that's right there is where you need to go. Um, you can use elastic bands to adjust where they are too, if you need to. Make sure that's, it's hard to do this, not in a mirror. Okay. And I have 47 and a half. Okay. All right. And then another measurement you need is from underneath your armpit right where your tank top starts, okay? Um, or where your bra starts, that might be even better because that's more indicative of a swimsuit. And go from there to your waist. And I have nine and three quarters for me. And then the last one is the body length. And so what you want to do is you want to put the measuring tape between your legs. 
Go all the way around, make sure it isn't twisting. Over your shoulder, but between the bust line. And grab that measurement. And I have about a, uh, 69 evenly. Okay. And those are the measurements you need to start. Okay. So I have the size chart here from the coddle. sew, and I'm going to kind of compare my measurements to it. So starting with the bust, I have 43 and a half. So I'm in between the 16 and 18 here. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put a tick mark right there. Um, on the waist, I have a 40. Um, actually, though, without the stuff that I was measuring um, on camera, it is a 39 um, because there was a waistband on my leggings and things that made it a little bit bigger. So um, I am between the 20 and 22. And then my hips are 47.5. And I am between the... Well, I'm just going to go ahead and say the 48 because it's pretty close. All right, so I'm going to be starting off with a uh, between the 16 and 18, going to the 20 at the waist, and then back to the, or uh, going to the 20, 22 at the hip, at the waist, and then back to the straight size 20 um, when I get to the hips. Okay, so um, the other thing I'm going to look at maybe are these, or not maybe, the other thing I'm going to look at are these finished measurements down here. Now, when you are making something woven that doesn't stretch, you have to add in a certain amount of ease, and that's just the extra amount that you put in there to be able to um, wear your garment, be able to lift your arm and all those things. Well, Knits have that already built in. And when you're talking about swim knits, you're talking about very high stretch control type fabric. So what you want to do is you want to have a little bit of negative ease. And they vary according to your comfort, how much you should have. Most people say you should have 20% uh, or so. That's reflected in the finished garment measurements there. So that's what you want to look at to just kind of compare, make all those apples and oranges um, work out. Okay, so I have the uh, front laid out here. And I know I'm between 16 and 18 in the upper bust or in the, in the bust area. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start on the 16 at the shoulders. And then I have large arms, so I'm going to bring that down to an 18 here. At the armpit. Arm side, I guess that's a nicer word than armpit. <laughs> so I'm going to take my ruler. So I'm going to go, I'm going to come out to the 18. Up to the 18. I'm going to take my ruler then and I'm going to, the waist needs to go between 20 and 22. So I'm going to make that curve uh, that, that would be between these two. So I'm going to make that curve. This, this, uh, through the bust, it's going to be the 18. Now when I get down here, I'm going to curve that out at the waist. And then back in at the bottom to the 20. And then I'm going to do the 20 all on the bottom. The neckline will be the 16. Now on the back I did... Um,
which this is really great for me because I have a very small neck and shoulders. So um, the fact that I'm able to make that smaller at the top means that it's not going to slide down and show things that I don't want to show. All right, I'm going to trace this down a ways through the bust line on the 18. And then I'm going to, once again, go between the 18 and 20 here in the waist. And then bring that back toward the 20 in the hips. And then just a 20. So now I have the front traced. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and then we'll look at the length. So now I have both pieces cut out and I need to decide if I'm going to add anything in the length. My torso was 69. These pieces together, measuring from here to here and taking out the seam allowances, um, are 61 and a half. Now, I want some ease, so um, what I have decided to do is give this uh, an inch in the front and an inch in the back, and it will be then, adding two inches to it, it'll be 63 and a half, which is a much uh, better percentage of ease in the length. I, I could go less, I could leave it as is, but I know that I have a long torso and I do not want this to write up on me. So I'm gonna go ahead and lengthen it. So I'm gonna do in the back, I'm just gonna draw a straight that line. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, just so you know that you're lining it up correctly. And I'm going to draw a line perpendicular straight across. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cut on that line. time I've drawn on a piece of paper my one inch plus some reference lines okay to keep the pieces lined up so there's that So I keep, so I drew a vertical line here so I can line them up and then I put a piece of paper here, slashed it on that line, put a piece of paper here. So that I could uh, make sure that these are lined up really nice and it didn't reach all the way over. So I'm going to take a little piece of this just because it drew. This should have gone all the way across and it I didn't make it long enough. 
but we need that to true up the line. Okay, so then you're just gonna redraw that line. And I know it's small and you can probably do it by hand, but what I would do is just use a ruler and make those differences, go from the known point to the known point and curve it right on over. Okay, do the same thing over here. Known point to known point and curve it. Okay. And I'm going to do the other side the same in the back. Okay. I mean the front. And then let me cut this. So this is my new piece on this side anyway. And then I want to raise this up because lengthening the torso, I'm afraid that's going to go to my, you know, what crack. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and um, move this up. So I'll show you how I do that. There's a lot of different ways you can do that, but I'll show you how I'm going to do it. Do the same thing on the other side. I have this piece of paper where I drew lines an inch apart and some vertical lines to be able to line up the pieces so that you know that you are lining them up in the right place. If you had green lines, you can use them, but there weren't any in that part of the suit. So I wanted to make sure that everything got lined up the way it should be. If you have a long torso, this is what you do. Now, if you're long, short-waisted, but long in the rise, then you might want to make your slit down here, okay? But I know I have a long torso. I have a long torso, and yet I measured this, and it's pretty darn low. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, I'm going to go ahead and move that up just uh, the inch that I took away. A lot is just knowing your body. And after you sew for a while, you get to the point where you can just about know that you're gonna have to do certain things. So, and lengthening the torso is just one of them that I always have to do. And they don't have lengthen um, body length on this pattern. So that would be a, a vote about you know, that would be a, a negative thing with this pattern, but uh, a lot of them don't, so. We just have to measure. But don't forget when you measure to figure on a little bit of ease because we're working with four-way stretch fabrics. Okay, I'm gonna take another piece of paper. Keep your old paper because you can use it for this kind of thing. I'm actually going to use the one that I printed with the measurements on it because I don't usually keep those. So I'm just going to slide that under there. I'm going to trace this curve. Like that. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw a, a reference line so I know I lined it up right. And then I'm just going to slide this up an inch. Measure it. Okay. And 
tape cat and I should have made that paper a little bit longer. <laughs> but, and you don't have to do that. You know, maybe you want a really long sexy back, but I, I was afraid if I did that, that it might be really, really, really revealing. So and I just kind of take the tape really tape that well and then cut on the new line cut this paper behind here because I don't need all that paper. All right. And then you end up with a lot of pieces of paper on the back um, just to keep them from flopping all over the place. I usually will take the back as well just so that uh, you have a steady piece of paper when you're cutting. You can see I have things on the back. I use paper over again. Um, if I just print something and don't use it on one side, I just turn it over and stick it back in the printer and use it again because paper is expensive and I also don't want to kill as many trees. So there you go. All right, so now I have the back. I've lowered the torso and I have raised that up an inch and I think that's going to fit me really well. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the back piece. I'm going to go in the same place that I did on the back. So right about there. Okay. And all right. So, um, I drew my line for the, where I want to spread it an inch. And now I'm just going to take and draw some lines just so that I know that I'm lining it up correctly and you don't have to be real fussy about them they're just reference lines so that when you put the put the paper down that you can make sure that you have it lined up okay all right and I'm gonna slash that and I just did something I never should do, and that's leave my, I left this with the blade open. Never, never, never. Don't do that. Ah, shouldn't have done that. All right, so I'm gonna spread that an inch, making sure that those lines, reference lines, will stay lined up. It's nice if you can get the, lines on the paper to line up too, but it's not an inch isn't that hard to visualize, so might need a little more paper. Yep. I'm actually just going to cut off a little corner here and put it on the end. Packing is not neat. <laughs> if you want a, a hobby that doesn't make a mess, or then I don't know, because there aren't very many. So just line that paper up right on that line. Okay. 
Like I said, all these lines are here for is to line, make sure that they're lined up and not shifted or anything. If you don't take time to do that, I mean, you can use the grain line. I mean, I could use that, but then there's none over here. So, um, but you also have the paper lines. So, um, go ahead and visualize that. I'll just take my ruler and make sure those are lined up. And tape them down on both sides. Same thing over here. Okay, that's lined up. So that popping up there. Okay. All right. Fitting patterns and adding and splashing and spreading is not neat. Um, if you're going to make a pattern a lot, what I suggest is to get some craft paper or um, even some people use some plastic that they sell like at the dollar store um, and just trace your pattern off um, if it's permanently for you because um, keeping them like this, uh, if I just keep them like this unless that's something that I'm going to make over and over again like a jeans pattern or a, um, you know, underwear or something like that. All right, and I'm just truing those up. All right, now I have my swimsuit ready to cut out the front and the back. Okay, I have put together the lining of the suit. And I think I really like the fit. I'm glad I added that extra inch. Um, some gaping here will be solved by elastic, which isn't in yet. Um, that won't go in until we have the whole thing. Um, but the reason I tried this on is just to do a quick fit check, which is nice to know with the lining before you cut into your suit fabric. Um, but where, how to get your cups exactly where you want them. And with this one, what I do is I just kind of hold them where I want it and I just pin, all right? And try to go only through the lining so that you don't... Now, I do this normally in my bra and underwear, but um, I can't show you that way, but I'm gonna just attempt to do it with this on. Um, go ahead and pin these right where you want them. And I put a couple pins in. I definitely want to get the bottom. I do wear my bra because you want you want the bottom, you know, of your cup to be right where your bra starts because you want that's where you want the girls to be. <laughs> it's hard to pinch just the lining here to pin. And, um, well, I didn't. Yeah, I'll do one over here. And then what I would do is walk over to the mirror and just kind of make sure that you have have them kind of evenly spread and that the um, the bottoms are, you don't want them overlapping, but you want them fairly close there in the middle. All right, and that is all you have to do. Um, it's gonna feel loose, it's gonna feel like it's falling off your shoulders and all those things right now because there is no elastic actually holding this to your body. But the basic fit is really, really good. So I'm very happy with that. Popping back in here to add one thing that I forgot to tell you. So what you will do 
after you get these where you want them, you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to zigzag all the way around them so that they're uh, on your lining the way you want them and then you'll go to the inside and just trim the lining away so that you have the cuffs attached to the lining. All right so I hope that helps you on your journey to make your own suits. Um, this might be one to bookmark when you um, get to that point where you need to know how to measure yourself. I'm quite happy with the Megan Nielsen Cottle Sew suit. I think it turned out really nicely. I'm, I'm going to put some pictures up here of how it fit. Um, I really, really think this is going to be a nice addition to my wardrobe. So have a wonderful weekend. I know I am going to be sewing up a storm, but also babysitting two of my grandchildren. So I may or may not get a lot done this week. Next week on Tuesday, I'm going to uh, go through my vacation plans um, as far as the clothing that I want to make. My husband decided he thinks that I should call it Me Made Mexico and make everything that I'm taking and um, take you guys along on the journey of what um, I am planning to make for my trip. So you can either enjoy seeing Mexico through my eyes or you can plan uh, your wardrobe for your own trip. And I'd sure love to see your plans, so please do share. On Tuesday, I'll have some viewer makes for you. And I'm just gonna go through the whole plan of what I plan to take with me. I have 14 dinners and 14 beach days. And then of course, some um, outings here and there. So I'll have my whole entire wardrobe planned and what I have and what I need to make. I'm not much of a module person, but when it comes to a resort vacation, I really do like to plan. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye for now and um, have a fabulous weekend. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. I'll put a link to the Cattle Sew Suit down there in the description box so you can um, check that pattern out if you'd like to. Um, have a wonderful weekend and I will see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye. Happy sewing.